Recently, we've hit a lot of FTSE 100 companies on this show, and so this week I thought we'd hit a FTSE 250 company. Today, we're going to take a look at Dixon's Carphone PLC. Hey there, guys. How's it going? My name is Chris Chillingworth. Welcome to episode number 23 of the FTSE show. Yeah, 23. Um, hope you are doing well during this whole lockdown process. Um, you may have noticed that I'm getting bearded. Uh, I thought I'd not shave for the process and see what happens. Um, it may end badly. I did used to have a big bushy beard down to here probably about four years ago. Uh, back when I was doing public speaking in Westminster, I got some videos of me up on stage with a huge beard. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe going back to those days. Depends how long this lockdown lasts for, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, anyway. So today I want to look at Dixon's Carphone PLC. Um, a household name, uh, a big brand uh, in the retail sector. So they probably won't do particularly well. Many of these retailers do not do particularly well. I think... Uh, other than Next PLC, who are doing pretty well for themselves somehow, I'm not sure why, uh, but they do seem to post good solid numbers, and maybe we'll do Next in one of the future episodes. Um, but most UK retail sector companies generally having a bit of a hard time. Uh, Dixon's PLC, just to look at some of these numbers and some of these stats, 3.6 million shares uh, traded a day, so not really as popular as a lot of the other companies, but they are a FTSE 250 companies, so you know we tend to see uh, volume a bit lower in those in that index. Yeah, that index. Um, however, these are bad numbers. Last year, in the last rolling 12 months, if you will, uh, we've seen a minus 55% drop in share price value. In the last two years, that's a minus 65%. In the last three years, minus 78%. And in the last five years, minus 84% drop in share price value. That tells you a picture. If in the first year we're looking at minus 55, and by over a five-year period we're looking at minus 84, and the further back you go, the bigger the drop, expect to see a chart that's going in one direction. Okay, so let's take a look at Dixon's Carphone PLC, Epic Code DC dot, uh, FTSE 250 index, and they're in the retailers sector. So we've only got data going back as far as the 2014 annual report, unfortunately, but that's six years worth of data now, including 2019's. That's going to be plenty for us to be able to see generally what's going on. So first thing that I notice over the last three years, we've got pretty stagnant revenue growth uh, from 10.2 to 10.5 to 10.4 billion so really we're not really seeing anything going anywhere I mean you could argue it's gone up a little bit over uh, 2017 to 2018 we've seen a slight decline in 2019 it's not a major concern but it looks like you know we could have reached maybe a bit of a peak there uh, doesn't necessarily mean it won't continue to go up uh, but we're probably expecting 2020 to be a, a negative year what with the uh, uh, the impact of the virus and all that. But um, cost of sales is my big concern because that is rapidly growing and is surpassed the revenue in 2019. So whatever makes up that cost of sales, it's costing the business their profits. And uh, that's a, a concern for me. I don't like companies that have any losing years. Losing years are bad news, uh, especially for share price growth. The the point to make here is that I'm looking for companies that are going to grow over the next 10 to 20 years. And we're talking about growing businesses in terms of the intrinsic value of that business, the under not not the price of the stock market shares, but the the underlying value of the business. I'm looking for a business that's going to grow uh, and do well. So I'm looking at the intrinsic value of the business and with that we expect the share price to take care of itself if the company's doing everything right and it's reinvesting its profits and it's doing a very good job of making big chunky profits we're talking 20 percent to 30 percent net earnings would be ideal you know 15 percent is okay uh companies that are making that kind of profit and they're reinvesting a big chunk of those profits rather than paying it all out on dividends but reinvesting some of that money for uh growth of that business you know that's what i'm looking for and I'm looking for a company that are going to keep doing that. They've been doing that for the last 10 years and they're going to carry on doing that. That's their focus. That's the way they do things. Because what will happen is the share price will grow with that business. 
investors and the overall market itself will see what the company is doing they'll see the company is growing demand for those shares will increase and the share price will, will rise and that's typically what we tend to see if you look at the 31 companies that I have found that, that tick all those boxes what you look at when you look at their graphs and their charts is sustained growth in share price that go along along with the sustained growth and continued growth in that company when you're looking at a company like Dixon's Carphone here, we've got flat revenue, so there's been no growth in the last three years, which is, like I say, a concern, but not a major concern. We could we could get over that if they were doing other things right. But the fact that cost of sales has now overtaken the revenue coming in and they're now making a loss at the gross profit level, that's a concern. That's a big concern because that is that means that the underlying value of the business, it's not really doing that well. Now, that might be a, a bad year, but if we come down to net earnings, we can see that prior to 2019's 3% net earnings loss, they really weren't doing that well. 4%, uh, sorry, 2.6, 1.9, 3, and 2.2% net earnings. Now, if you take the average of all of that and include 2019's data, we're looking at an average of about 1.8% net earnings a year. So of all the money coming into Dixon's Carphone PLC over the last six years, they're keeping only about 1.8% of it per year. And for me, that's just nowhere near enough. Nowhere, I mean, we're talking about, I'm investing in companies that are hitting 20, 25, 30% net earnings. They're keeping 30% of all the money that comes into the business. They get to keep 30% for the shareholders that they can pay in dividends, that they can, more importantly, because I'm not a big fan of dividend uh, payments, I would much rather a company, instead of paying out dividends, reinvest that money into the business so the business can grow. We're talking about buying more assets. We're talking about retained earnings so they can uh, acquire other, other comp competitors or other businesses to um, complement their, their products or their services. You know, And so they can grow. They can carry on growing and growing and growing into the future. And that's what I want because the share price will grow with that intrinsic growth value of the business. Uh, I'm not so interested in the dividends because, sure, you know, as a shareholder, we get dividends, we get paid a bit of money. But the company can generally do better with that money than just giving it to me, if that makes sense. You know, I'd rather the company keep it and grow it uh, and I'll get a better share price out of it after the 15, 20 years I've been holding it. Um, Dixon's Carphone, they, they can't do that because they're just not making enough profit. There's just not enough profit being made here by this business. And it's down to the cost of sales. They're just too high. Uh, so that's a very sort of underlying issue here with this company. And, uh, you know, they're talking their annual report that they're going through a transitional period and blah, blah, blah. Loads of companies say that all the time. All the CEOs are always going to sound optimistic. That's their job. You know, uh, I mean, the John Lee, Lord John Lee wrote a book about uh, what's it called? How to make a million slowly. Uh, I read that book and one of his pointers was if you want to do it, be a good investor. Pick companies where the CEOs are confident and optimistic. And I thought to myself, that is some of the worst advice I've ever heard. Because if you read annual reports, you'll find out that every CEO is optimistic about their business, whether they truly believe it or not. Uh, they're always going to write something optimistic. So, yeah, I'm not, not particularly a big fan of that book, personally. Um, but we can have a look at the balance sheet and liabilities short term or current liabilities if you will outweigh the current assets we've got 2.5 billion in current liabilities we've got 2.3 billion in assets so uh, a bit of a concern but you know again if this is a company that was doing everything right i wouldn't be overly concerned by it uh, but by a company that's making a loss now in 2019 and their history hasn't been particularly solid it's a bit of a concern for me uh, more so a concern because once we take all of the assets minus all the liabilities and we're left with the shareholder equity, we can see the shareholder equity has fallen by about, what are we looking at here? We're looking at about 550 million, so half a billion in shareholder equity. Uh, so that's a concern for me. I don't like seeing shareholder equity go down, but it should be going up. We should not be seeing any equity reductions so that's a concern and we're also looking at retained earnings going down by half a billion as well 1.6 billion in retained earnings now only 1.1 there was no acquisitions in 2019 
So uh, all I can think of is they've dipped into that just to kind of keep themselves going, which is not core. Cool. That's not what we're after. We want to see sustained retained earnings injection so that they grow in money so they can use that for, you know, rainy day fund or uh, acqu acquiring other businesses or, uh, or or buying more assets for this company so that they uh, assets that can bring in more income for this company, more business. Uh, that's that's not not a sign of good growth. Um, the return on shareholder equity has been historically relatively low. So what we're talking about here is the return that, that Dixon's Carphone are getting for their shareholders from the, uh, from the equity that it holds. So what kind of returns are they getting from all the assets that they own? And has not been very well performing, which means that their their assets just haven't really been performing that particularly well. Um, and then they're spending a fairly large amount on property, plant and equipment. Any company that's got high capital expenditure in in property, plant and equipment to in order to stay competitive in their sector or in their industry, generally is going to struggle to uh, to to do well in terms of share price growth. Let's take a quick look at the chart. OK, so many people were asked the question, look, Dixon's car phone, 69 pence a share. Is that a steal right now? Is that a, a good deal right now? So let's call it 70 pence per share. Well, this is what I always say. And I say I've said this on many other episodes before. Listen, if a company that's got fantastic financials, that is ticking every box in what I'm looking for in terms of a growth company that are making 15, 20% net earnings or better, you know, and all of that, they're ticking all the boxes, they're making huge profits, they're doing fantastically well, and their share price is down, often because of forces outside of their control, such as a flu epidemic or some sort of virus or, you know, some sort of banking crisis or whatever it might be, that's when these, these small, these low share prices are still because you're buying a great company that by no fault of its own has had their share price hammered down to a very small price and now we're looking at great this is wonderful because now we can get into this own shares in this wonderful company that's probably going to continue to do very well for itself if it's got a culture of doing things well for itself over, over the last 10 years we can get in at a much cheaper price than we ever would have been able to before so when people say to me is this a steal I say to them Absolutely not, because if we look at the financials, this is not a company that's been ticking all the boxes. This is a company that's got a history of having very poor net earnings that are only really just kind of just staying afloat in terms of profitability. Uh, and so much so in 2019, they made a, a financial loss. And so we're seeing retained earnings fall. We're seeing the equity in the business fall. We're seeing revenue flatten out over the last three years. We've seen cost of sales exceed the revenue and cause the company to go into uh, a negative territory in terms of profits, in terms of losses, if you will. So the, all of these things are pointing in the wrong direction. The share price here, therefore, they deserve. They deserve to be only worth 70 pence a share because the shares really aren't worth any more because this is a company that are not producing the numbers. And so when someone says to me, hey, 70 pence for Dixon's car phone, what do you think? I say, I'm not interested because this is not a steal. They deserve to be at that level. Show me, you know, a company that ticks all the boxes but the share price is at 70p, then maybe I'll start getting very excited and very interested. But Dixon's car phone are not that company, unfortunately. So it didn't look particularly good in the uh, in the numbers there or on the chart. Like I said, not really a bargain at 70 pence a share. Uh... There's a reason why that share price is down there, and for me, therefore, you know, it's not a uh, attractive opportunity for me. If this was a company that were ticking all the boxes and looking really solid, trading down at that level because of something outside of their control that had knocked the share price all that, that all that way down, then I'd probably be very interested. Uh, but they deserve to be down at 70 pence per share without wanting to be too brutal about it. Um, so it's time to get them up on the leaderboard. And unfortunately, we've got to get the red pen out because I think you could probably guess what was going on there. We've seen the numbers. We've seen the chart. It's not looking pretty. Uh, do I think they're in trouble? Maybe. Maybe not in the next year. Maybe not in the next couple of years. I mean, it depends what impact the 2020 uh, crash 
uh, and the the economic outlook looks like for retailers uh Dixon's car phone really aren't a strong business they never really have been so they are one of those companies that's trading on a very thin margin uh 2019's obviously a losing year 2020 will probably be a losing year for them we just don't know the impact of that yet um will they recover from that that is the question uh unfortunately they are yeah they are a new record holder i didn't think this was going to happen Minus 111. Listen, this is the same scoring process I use on all the companies I look for. It's weighted based on uh, the company's uh, match to what I'm looking for. So if they tick all my boxes, they're going to get a high score. If they don't tick my boxes, they get a low score. If there's negative trends in their numbers, they get hit badly. Uh, if there's positive trends in their numbers, everything's looking great. So, you know, there's a lot of different stuff in there, weighted at different levels. But I've tested all these companies against the same scoring algorithm. And unfortunately, Dixon's car phone score minus 111, which is a brand new low. Uh, I promise that next week we'll look at a company that at least won't be using the red pen. Let's get them up on the board. The bonus of uh, having a company that is right down the bottom means I haven't got to move all these bloody things down one each time. So that's a bonus. Um, listen, I promise next week we'll look, look at a company that isn't down at the foot of the leaderboard uh, that is a bit more interesting. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video... Uh, I am now doing two of these a week. I've been saying I was going to do it for ages. I'm finally there. We're finally doing it now. So every Monday and every Thursday, we're now churning out another company. So um, if you are enjoying this show, please subscribe. Please like the videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.